When you're making precision tools, like these mini parallels, accuracy starts long before you make your first cut. If your minimal is not in tram, nothing you make will ever be perfectly flat or square. So, before I touch a piece of metal, I am going to get this mole as close to perfect as I can. Let us see how far out it really is. I am starting with the x-axis, which is a side-to-side -side squareness of the column. To measure that, I mounted the dial indicator in the spindle using the steel pillar for my magnetic base. That lets me swing the indicator from one end of the bed to the other. The indicator tip rests on a pair of parallels to keep it clear of the T-slots. I have locked the column and both X and Y feeds, so nothing moves during measurement. It is zeroed on the left side. Now, Swing it to the right side. The reading is 0.07 mm higher, which means the column is leaning slightly to the right. If I mold the part across the bed, it would come out concave and not flat. Definitely not good enough for precision work. Next, I will check the Y axis, which is the front to back alignment. The parallels are very useful here because the dial can reach wider than the table width, which improves accuracy. I zeroed the dial in the middle, then moved it to the back. At the back it reads 0.04 mm. At the front it drops to minus 0.04 mm. So the column is leaning back by about 0.08 mm. To make sure this is not a warped column or bed, I repeated the test on the right side. There the back reads 0.12 mm and the front reads 0.04 mm. That difference is also 0.08 mm. Good. That means there is no twist or warp, only a tilt. If I mold a part across the bed, it would come out skew and not square. Definitely not good enough for precision work. To fix the tram, I need to move the column forward and to the left. For that, I can use the exoskeleton that I have built in the previous video to improve the rigidity on this minimal. The exoskeleton is a 20mm backplate and a 40mm baseplate bolted together. It has two bolts to push the column forward and three bolts to pull it back. Together they let me adjust the front to back tram. And for the side to side movement I use the fine adjustment screws on each side which lets the column pivot around the main bolt. They act like micrometer stops which makes very small adjustments much easier. First I loosened the big bolt at the base. It was tight. I had to give the spanner a few hits with a 5 pound hammer to break it loose. Once it's free, I backed off the 5 smaller bolts. I snugged the main bolt just enough 
so the column stays straight, but can still swing naturally about the pivot. To shift it left, I tighten the right hand fine adjustment screw just enough to match the column left by 0.04mm. When it looked correct, I tightened the main bolt again. And yes, I hammered it tight. A torque wrench might be better, but this works. The exoskeleton gives the main bolt enough support so I can clamp it hard without worrying about crashing anything. Something I never trusted with the flimsy factory washer. Let us check the tram again. Zero on the left, swing to the right. The reading is minus 0.06 mm. That is essentially perfect. This indicator can only measure 0.01 mm. So the real value is effectively zero. Now to fix the front to back alignment. The fine adjustment screws are not needed here, so I back them off. With everything loose, the column now hangs forward by about 0.08 mm. To bring it back, I tightened the three rear bolts a little at a time, checking the dial after every change. After a few more small adjustments, both front and back reads almost exactly the same. To confirm, I swung the indicator to the right side of the bed. There, it shows 0.01 mm at the front and 0 at the back. That is as good as I'm going to get on this machine. The mill will deflect more than that, even during light cuts. So now, the mill is in tram both side to side and front to back. The error is well under a hundredth of a millimeter. That means that when I start making those small parallels, they will finally come out perfectly square and flat. Getting a mill in tram takes patience, but once it is done, every job afterwards becomes easier and more accurate. And it feels good, knowing the column is finally standing straight. Next, I'll be putting this freshly trimmed mill to work to make those small parallels, and we will see if the effort paid off. Check out the next idea by clicking the link on screen. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next project.